I know, we're romping on, that's yeah, the thing. Man. I've had to dial it back so we can get a conversation in. <laughs> Otherwise we'd be over there I by know, now. I know. Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome along to another review from us. And as you can probably tell already, we are trying out one of Coombe's reversible on land plows. Well, I think he does on land and in furrow. So double bubble with this plow. So to tell us all about it, we have Coombe UK's Mr. John Holland uh, with us. Uh, also, massive thank you to uh, Malpas Tractors for helping us out with the plow, sorting us out with the plow getting his uh, up and running as well so yeah definitely massive thank you to those guys so i mean first of all john i've got to admit i've never tried a coon plow ever i've tried all sorts of other little flavors yeah. uh, and this is the first time i tried a coon plow and so far it's going rather swimmingly so i'm counting on you to sort of help me yeah. sort of pop my coon plow cherry Sounds good. Uh, Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds ominous. <laughs> yeah, definitely. definitely. One or the other. So, I mean, for a start off, uh, what model of plough is this uh, Is this one that we've got with us today? Today we've got our uh, Vary Master L. Um, she's, as you said before, on land in thorough. Um, so it really means we can tailor her to what we're trying to do. If we're using guidance like we are today, Train. on land. Yeah, trying. <laughs> trying to use guidance. Guidance has um, got other ideas, but it's working. That's Fingers it. crossed. Or if um, you know the conditions mean that you know, like we have got rain, but you know the tractor's working well with the tyres on the top here. But if it was particularly wet and we needed more traction, we could work in the furrow to to get that grip and and do that. So really use it in how the conditions are, are asking us to use. Well, so it, to what the fair. conditions dictate, really. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So. She's an auto reset, and as we'll see now and again when we come across a stone that one of the legs uh, trips back, yeah. she's a, a six furrow machine. The auto reset is done through hydraulics, so we've set the pressure so we can tailor the auto reset to the field conditions right. again. So if we're in a light loam but it's really stony, we can reduce yeah. the pressure. But if we're in a, in a heavy soil, in a dry year, we can increase it so it's not breaking back unnecessarily. Um, due to you know hard tram line or, or that side of it, and that's it. You can tailor it to like the conditions today. We're just a little bit greasy on top, but it yep. is pretty dry underneath. That's so it. we can tailor that to try and sort of help us along yeah. a bit as well to, to, to do the best job in the field, and that that's what it's all about. You know, yeah. getting getting the best results. The other thing as well, as you said, first time using a a coon plow that's quite good about it. She's very simple to set up, and that's a generic thing on coon yeah. plows. Um, this model here has got what we call the pro set. So this is where we adjust the alignment. So you can see we just took that, that simple tool and adjusted it with a couple of turns to make sure the plow was pulling true. That's it, um, we were soon there and uh, soon away, weren't we? That's it, so there's no messing around getting spanners or, or anything like that. It's a simple adjustment, um, you know, which is a, a five second job to do to, to get her to pull right and, and match to, you know, to the, to, to the tractor and the, the That's steering it. and so on. And this this, this plow, uh, whereabouts? Because you've you know you've got a big range of plows, you yeah, guys at yeah. Coon. So whereabouts would this sort of sit in the family of your plows? So this is in the in the upper range, really. She is. Um, we only do her up to six furrow, really, because of the weight and the the, the length of the plow. Being on land, it puts it a lot further further, further yeah. back with the weight and so on. Um, with her, she's a 300 horsepower headstock, so it's right. designed for the bigger tractors. We've got the new headstock design on this plow, yeah. with the bigger turnover shaft, which is 130 Some beef now. in that. There Some is, beef in there. There is, <laughs> and, and that's the thing. We're, we're not shy with plenty of steel in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she is for the bigger tractor, bigger output. With the hydraulic vary, if we can do yeah. it to 20 inch, 22 inch furrows, so we can really cover some some width and get some output yeah. out of the machine. And with those big furrows, presumably you can get some big tires dropped in there as yeah. well if yeah. need be. And that's it. We've got the the LPO body on the on the plow here today. We offer a lot of different range of, of bodies from yeah. slats to shallow bodies. Uh, you know, depending on what 
which area of the country we're in and what the, yeah. you know what the customer wants. But these are what these are our standard board, the LPO board. These ones that are on this. Yeah, right. so we can work with a 710 tire quite comfortably in the furrow bottom. And as it's, you can see, they're quite a throaty board. So it really, is. It's got a really good. I suppose you could say a really good helix on it, hasn't it? Yeah, it real, properly. Real gives it some, throat. doesn't it? Yeah, and that's and as well with the design of them, we make all of our own metal. In right. house for our own foundry and that's all so done in France, so is it? Yeah, yeah, that's it at the um, at Chateaubriand on the on the west side of, uh, of France, where the factory is based, and and we use the bod bodies are all made of triplex, so we have three different layers of steel, so a real hard face, a more marble flexible yeah. middle to help with the the soil undulations and so on, and then obviously another hardened face. Right, so they're kind of layered up, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. it. So it's quite a unique thing to coon with that. We've through that it's a painted design of that that three different layers, three different even yeah. thicknesses of, of layer um, with it. So so yeah, it's yeah. one of the things that we're quite proud of our wearing metal on that. And side. these these on land plows are is it is on land plowing getting more popular these days, or yeah. where, where is it heading? What's the trend sort it of doing these days? It has become a lot more fashionable. Um, and I've definitely noticed in the last four years a lot more intake to on land, but people still want the option to go in furrow as well. Yeah. Um, and really, that's probably come a bit more from guidance, you know, yeah. as we've been, been looking at and trying today, and also with tyre size, you know, as well. Yeah. People, yeah, we're on 710 tyres, but people are looking at 800s, 900 tyres, crawlers, etc. So that's where on-land ploughing is is a must, really. That's yeah, it. You know, that's um, so that's where the fashions come into into that side of it, I think. So yeah, talk us through a few sort of specs of the plough, like your, your clearances, point to point, under beam, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah. So on this, obviously, as we talked about, it's just six furrows. It's a five plus one, so you could remove the six furrow if you wish to, um, or you could buy her as a five. And, and they're working on a ninety-six point to point yeah. clearance on the machine. So we've already mentioned we can go up to a 22 inch um, wide furrow uh, on her, but with this being an on land, we can work up to a three, three and a half meter wide tractor. Right. So we can work, we've got a real wide offset on, yeah. the, on the on land with it. So that's one of the advantages, especially when we're talking about 300 horsepower tractors, they're obviously a lot bigger, a lot wider. Yeah. We need that, that ability to offset around yeah. there. Um, she's, eight centimetre under beam clearance on it um, but as you'd see it is the, the furrow is set away from the beam so it's you know it's not like a traditional under beam clearance because yeah. it's not on the beam it's to the side because of the the hydraulic reset that's it and you've kind of got these sort of crank times as well and yeah and that's to, to, to really align it and and what you'll notice is the arm itself that is again um, it's a forged piece that we make so it means that it can take um, the stresses of going through the ground because it has got some some flexibility within it that it will help protect the leg yeah. with it. So it gives it a little bit of give because if you had it too hard and too rigid, that's when you'd have issues with cracking and so on. That's it. And yeah. that's what you don't want with a plow. No, so. not really. <laughs> <laughs> Never a good thing. No, definitely not. So the other thing is that we've. Um, developed with the plough is actually the...